Hello everyone, my name is Emmanuel, also known as Yatuza with DB Academy, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make tracks like the ones on Sofa Sounds recordings. So without further ado, let's get into the program. Okay, so before we get started, all of the sounds that are used in this project are part of DB Academy sample packs, which you can obtain on our website. So please make sure to check that out if you are interested in any of the sounds that I've used to make this project. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you the track that I'm going to be breaking down today. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to take a look at is going to be the bases. The main base is made from Molecular's b, b Academy sample pack. And I've gone and grabbed a base. In this case, it's going to be base 19. I loaded it into a sampler and I looped it at a certain spot where I thought um, it sounded a kind of seamless and for me to be able to play it so that I'm not uh, really stuck on the sample itself. And let me go ahead and turn off the post-processing so that you can hear just what the sample sounds like inside of the sampler. So what I did was I loaded the whole sample onto the sampler here. And here where it says sustain mode, I chose the icon right here. And I linked it so that I can choose uh, the loop start, the loop end, and where it crossfades at. At this point, what I've done is that I've found a certain spot here where I can loop. And with the crossfade, you get rid of that click. And I've also added some attacks so it doesn't have a click at the beginning. The little click sounds and that kind of messes up your mix down later on. So once I found this, this place here in the sample and I um, decided on where I wanted it to loop at, um, that's when I went in and kind of drew in the notes. In this case, I am playing a D sharp and a D. I was hearing that it needed some post-processing because it didn't have much high-end to make it interesting enough. So I'm going to show you how I made this audio effect back to kind of bring it to life. And on this audio effect rack, just what to boost the mid, that I put an EQ8 here. Mid high is around 1K, and I've also added a saturator with soft clipping on and 4 dB of drive. Then I duplicated the chain here, and I am adding the Tal Chorus, which I believe is a free plugin. And I've also duplicated the saturator onto this chorus layer. I put a utility on it and expanded the width so that's a bit wider in the stereo image. And I've gone ahead and sweeped out all the low end. So this is what the layer sounds like in parallel to the clean signal. So it's, just, it's a bit wider and it's playing around in the stereo field. And for the clean one, I'm just going to be using this as the main body of the sound. Then the third layer that I have here in parallel is just a layer with erosion. It's at 200% at uh, 16k and I've just gone and cut all the low end and a bit of the high end out and added another saturator 
uh, but this time it's with the hard curve. And that's where it's obtaining most of the crisp from. So this is what it sounds like without it. And when I turn it on. And that would be it for this bass. I mean, I think the main magic comes here from the moment where I've chosen to loop it. And you can get a lot of variations from this sampler here. And just by, you know, chucking in different samples and choosing a certain place where that it can loop without sounding too clicky. Okay, so that's like the main bass that I've uh, obtained for this, this track. And once I created this bass, I've gone and just duplicated the layer and I used it as an intro teaser bass so that it kind of anticipates the drop. Let me just show you what that sounds like. It's got, you know, the same sampler here looping at the same place. But this time I've just got an auto filter sweeping out all that low end and I have it automated so that it's just ramping up and it gets filtered gradually until it drops. So let's just hear what that sounds like. So I think this creates really nice tension and really nice anticipation so that when it drops the bass gets introduced properly. And the only difference that I have in the post-processing from the main bass here is that I have an auto filter that's sweeping all the low end. But after the auto filter I have an amp which is generating that, that distortion on top of the signal. <laughs> And then I also have a hybrid reverb automated so that it's gradually increasing as it gets uh, closer to the drop. Apart from that, I have an EQ8 here that I've used to sweep out all the low end that it has. And I've also automated the makeup gain of a glue compressor. And so I've automated the makeup gain here uh, near the end so that it has a bit more presence uh, once it is about to drop. And that gives it that feeling uh, of it kind of rushing into the drop. If I turn the glue compressor off, you're going to hear that it, it's a bit less volume. It's a bit less exciting. And it gets filtered out. It also kind of takes a little bit of volume away with it. So I wanted to add that back so that when the main bass comes in, it does hit harder. We're gonna take a look at the second bass now. This is a bit more simple and I've just kind of filtered and played with the LFO of the bass here that it's that's taken from Molecular's DMB Academy sample pack and this is actually let's see here bass 27 from his DMB Academy sample pack and you can find that on the website as well. So this is actually bass 27 from his sample pack and added a bit of my own layer to it. So this is what the sample sounds like without any of the uh, processing that I've put on it. So apart from it being warped, I've also automated the frequency of the filter so that it is opening up and I have it uh, fully working on an LFO with an offset of 354 degrees here and the rate of 1.6. But I've automated the rate as well so that at a certain point it does vary. So it starts at 316th and then it goes down to 1.6. And the main like kind of flare and movement is coming from this filter here with the LFO um, with the triangle shape. And once I was convinced with the movement that I've generated with this auto filter here, I duplicated the sound to make a mid-high layer and have it so that it's a bit more distorted and make it a bit more interesting. Uh, applying similar methods to the ones that I've used in the intro layer of the bass. So as you can see here, we, we have the standard auto filter here with LFO movement and the same rate as the subby layer. Uh, but in this one, I added the same uh, filter that is 
taking away all the low end and then I have the amp afterwards that's giving it that uh, distorted kind of ampy feel. I've increased the middle and treble knobs. So let's just listen to the layer by itself and then I'll play it back to you with the subby layer. And here it is with the subby layer. So the first bass is kind of asking a question and it's getting answered by the second bass that I've made here. So let's just hear those together now. bass layers kind of got created with the bass loops and i wanted to show you guys how i made a different bass so this is a good technique that you can apply to any kind of bass loop that is kind of strict um and it's kind of hard to get out of that place you know where the the sample kind of sets you in okay so the next thing that we're going to do is going to take a look at the intro and i'm going to play it for you so that you kind of hear what it sounds like Okay, so for the intro, the main pads that are kind of doing the main work are these two samples right here. And I'm just going to play it without the reverb so that you can get an idea of how it sounds like. So it's a bit choppy, but I've only used it as an impulse for the reverb. And what I've gone and done here is that I automated the dry wet, but I also uh, turned off the flat and the cut button here and just turned on the freeze. It kind of just stays in place until I decide to turn it off here with the dry wet. In this case, I have automated the on and off button. have another sample here which I'm just kind of band passing it and this adds on to the atmosphere and the soundscape of the intro itself and this is one of the more tonal samples that I have in the intro that just kind of bleeds into the drop Other sample that I've got here that I'm using as an effect, just a bit of ear candy to have in the background. So that's it. I mean, the intro is is, is really simple. Uh, there's nothing too overcomplicated. Cool. So the next thing that we're going to take a look at is going to be the drums. This is what the drums sound like. Just a simple kick and snare here. I did go ahead and make these shorter so that they don't have so much tail. And the snare, I did go in and make this shorter to what it sounds like. So I want it for it to be snappier and a bit tighter. And all I've gone and done was just kind of fade it. And I thought it was perfect. Then for the tops, I duplicated a certain spot in the loops and I layered these. So I have some like flashy symbol uh, samples that are panned to the right. And the standard hi-hat pattern, I panned it to the left. And then I just have like a one-shot open hi-hat that I had at the beginning. 
And uh, for the second sample that you see right here, it's actually the same loop, but I stretched it by holding uh, control and shift. It will allow you to stretch it onto the grid like that once this bracket shows up on the screen. And just made sure to add another open hi-hat here at the end on top of the snare. And when the switch up comes, I've added some shakers here. So in this case, it's just preserving the transient at the rate where I'm choosing it to. I've also duplicated it at a point where I liked it. And I'm just going to show you how it sounds like without me preserving the transients at this rate. Has a lot more release. And if you like the video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.